Hi students, so today we are going to discuss another new costing approach that is target costing. So when we discuss target costing, we should know the difference between traditional costing as well as target costing, isn't it? So let us take an example. Imagine there is a company and the company has identified the products which it wants to manufacture. Then the next step what the company does is it generally decides the specifications for the product. Once the specifications are decided, then it sends the identified product with the specified features to the design team. And the design team generally designs the product. Once the design is over, then the company sends this design to the cost accounting department. And this cost accounting department estimates the cost of the design. Okay. To that cost, a certain percentage of profit is added. And that total is the selling price for the product. And this concept is known as traditional costing. Clear? And coming to target costing. We are discussing target costing, isn't it? So target costing is straight opposite of traditional costing. So under target costing, what happens is a company identifies a product. And to the identified product, the company generally decides a specification. That is what features are needed for the product. Once features are decided, the next thing what the company does is it decides the target selling price. That is at what price the customers are ready to buy the product. Once target selling price is decided, the company needs certain profit, isn't it? So that target the profit is added to it. Keep one thing in mind. The company while deciding target profit should think of long run. That is, it will survive for a long run and it will produce a product for a long duration. So on the basis of long run, target profit is decided. So now we have the target selling price as well as the target profit. When we did up the target profit from the selling price, the ultimate thing what we get is known as target cost. And this target cost is sent to the design team. And the design team is asked to produce a product with that cost. And this concept is termed as target costing. Clear? So let us understand the mere difference through the help of a boater. So coming to traditional costing, what happens is identifying identification of product is done. Next, specification of features for the product is done. On the basis of specification, the product is designed and this design is sent to cost accounting department where the cost is estimated and once the cost is estimated, a certain percentage of profit is added and the ultimate figure is known as selling price. So this is traditional costing. And what happens in target costing is the product is identified, the specifications for the product is decided and after that, target selling price is fixed up. This price is fixed on the basis of the customer's perception. That is at what price the customers are ready to pay. And after that, what the company needs, that is the target profit which the company wants, that is added. And from the target selling price, target profit is deducted. The ultimate thing what we get is known as target cost. And this target cost, basing on this cost, the design team is called and they are asked to manufacture the product. And this is termed as target costing. Clear? So target costing means it is a method of costing the product from the point of view of customer. Clear? So target costing is costing from customer perspective is termed as target costing. So what happens is you can call this as the process of target costing even. So in target costing what happens? The product is identified, specifications are designed, next selling price is decided, target selling price is decided on the basis of customers and then target cost is decided, okay sorry target profit is decided that is what the company wants and after that the, if you subtract the target selling price from the profit you will get the target cost. And basing on this target cost, the company starts to manufacture. So what happens is, every company cannot manufacture with the target cost. That is, what is the ultimate cost what we get? Basing on the customer perception. With that cost, each and every company cannot manufacture. 
So in the design stage, in order to produce the good with the target cost, what the company does is, it uses two techniques. The first technique is known as value engineering and the second technique is known as value analysis. So value engineering means when the manufacturer makes any changes in the process or changes in the techniques or changes in the materials or changes in the equipment so that functionality of the product doesn't get disturbed, it is termed as value engineering. Clear? So changing either the process, material or resources so that the functions of the product doesn't get disturbed, it is termed as value engineering. And the second technique what is used is value analysis. So value analysis is when the company tries to eliminate all the non-value added activities of the product. Okay, all the non-value added of the activities are eliminated, then obviously the cost reduces, isn't it? And that process is termed as value analysis. Clear? So in order to meet the target cost, the company uses two techniques while designing it. And that are termed as value engineering as well as value analysis. Clear? So, apart from these differences, there are certain other differences between traditional costing as well as target costing. So, the first difference is in the process. That is what we have discussed till now. And the second difference is in target traditional costing, the price is determined by cost. Okay. And whereas in target costing, cost determines the price. Okay. On the basis of cost, price is determined. And the next one is Traditional costing, it is not a customer based approach. You are not thinking of a customer when you are costing. Whereas in target costing, you think of a customer, the customer specification and then you try to manufacture it. And the third one is, third difference is, this traditional costing is basically suitable for established products. It is not at all suitable for newly products. Whereas target costing is used for only newly introduced products. It is not suited for established products. So this is the difference between target costing as well as traditional costing. And coming to the next concept that is principles of target costing. So this target costing has five main principles. The first one is price led costing. So in target costing the price leads to costing. That is the selling price determines the cost for the products. Okay. And coming to the second principle focus on customers. So in target costing, customers are given the high priority. That is what are the specifications customer need. That is what product customer need. In what quantity, what quality and at what price. On the basis of that costing is done. Okay. So it focuses on customers. And the third one is focus on design. So target costing generally focuses on design. So here in target costing, what it does is it uses two tools. That is value engineering as well as value analysis. So that the design matches with the customer and the functions doesn't get disturbed due to cost. And the fourth one is value chain involvement. So in target costing, all the value chain, that is from the customers to the employees, everyone is involved for setting cost. Okay. And the last one is life cycle orientation. So in target costing, the entire life of the product is studied first before determining a cost for a product. Okay. So this is about the principles. So the next concept in target costing is, what are the methods of target costing? You generally have three methods of target costing. The first one is subtraction method, the second one is addition method and the third one is integration method. Coming to the first method that is subtraction method. So under this method, the target cost is generally determined by analyzing the market situation as well as the expected competition. Clear? So subtraction method is a method of ascertaining cost by studying the market situation as well as the competition now. And under this method, the target cost is determined by the formula. That is, target cost is equal to price minus price into gross profit by sales. And coming to the second method, that is addition method. So under this method, it is generally considered as an extension to the present method. Clear? So under this method, generally past data is generally taken into consideration.
relation to determine the target cost. Okay, so here it is generally considered as an extension to the method which the company is presently using. So under this method, the target cost is calculated by the cost of main function into 1 plus number of extra functions by number of existing functions. Okay, and coming to the third and the last method, integrated method. So when I say integrated, it is generally combination. So integrated method is a combination of subtraction method as well as addition method. So under this method, all the departments generally come and discuss and will have an interaction and commonly they will decide a common target cost. Okay, so this is how the methods of target cost is determined. Clear? And coming to the advantages of target costing. So you have a couple of advantages as well as disadvantages. Let us study in detail. So coming to the first one, cost optimization. So in target costing, target cost is set first and then product is manufactured. So as a result, the cost optimization can be achieved. That is, cost can be reduced with the help of target costing. And the second one is customer oriented approach. So in target costing, you are costing the products from the customers. That is the customer's ability to pay for the product is considered and then a product is manufactured basing on the customer selling price. So it is termed as customer oriented approach. And the third advantage is profit in long run. So in target costing, production is done basing on customer specifications. Production is done basing on customer price, isn't it? So, profit is generally sure. Back to, you will not derive a profit in short run. In long run, the profitability of an organization generally increases due to target costing. And the fourth one is reduced development cycle. So, in target costing, when you are using a target costing, there will be reduced development cycle. From the innovation stage, that is the idea generation stage, to the market ready products. The cycle of producing the products is generally reduced when you are using target costing. And the next one is product innovation. So when you use target costing, innovative products with high quality can be produced. And the last one is facilitates good communication. So through target costing, there is good communication between all the team members in an organization so that you can produce a product with the desired price. Okay, so this is about advantages. And coming to the disadvantages, the first one is detailed cost data. So when a company wants to use target costing, it should have the detailed cost data in hand. And only on the basis of the actual cost data in hand, it can go for target costing. Without that, if it goes for target costing, it may result in losses for the company. Clear. And the second one is cooperation and coordination needed. So in order to implement Target costing, you need the cooperation as well as coordination of all the employees who are working in the organization. Only if all the employees and the management work collectively, you can implement this model. And the third one is reduce quality due to use of cheap components. So in target costing, you are fixing the selling price first. And you are deciding the cost first on the basis of selling price. Isn't it that? So here... There are chances of using cheap components because you are deciding the selling price and you are bound to produce on that selling price. So due to this reason, the organization will use cheap components in order to match with the selling price. Okay, these are the advantages as well as disadvantages. I hope the class is clear. If you have any doubts, you can contact me. Thank you.